Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And in that light, I'm always trying to spread the word, the message about freedom, highlighting, showcasing entrepreneurs, and sharing those conversations with you. So today we have a creative entrepreneur, Ashton, and she's actually passionate about spreading the concept that drawing can be used as a thinking tool, which is very interesting. Uh, so today we're going to talk all about um, presentations, creative business, uh, drawing, and uh, using it as a tool. So I'll let Ashton talk about her business, introduce her himself, and bring her onto the show. So Ashton, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Anytime that I get to talk a little bit about what I do and all the inner workings behind it, and I can stand on my soapbox for a little bit, I'm <laughs> I'm so down. So thank you for welcoming uh, me here to talk to your audience today. Yeah, and it's um, I'm always like I said, I'm always interested in creatives because that's the next generation that's going to impact the world in the future. And so tell us more about yourself, your business, how you got started, and so on. Yeah. So uh, so when I was younger and trying to decide what I wanted to sort of be when I grew up, I actually just wanted to be a mom. And that was my ambition in life was just to be a mother. Um, so I, I took some education uh, to educate small children and and that sort of led me into working at a nonprofit family center. And that introduced me into the world of facilitation. And I absolutely fell in love with the world of facilitation and group process and about how you can help people come to their own wisdom by just asking good questions and creating a really safe space. And I just really, really fell in love with facilitation. And few years into doing that type of work, I learned about graphic facilitation and I've always been very creative. Even though I uh, didn't actually draw a whole lot, I tried lots of different art mediums. Um, I just took like a one day course on graphic facilitation and I was like, this is it. And that was about nine years ago. Um, I had a few children. I have, a, I have three kids. Uh, so I fulfilled that, mm -hmm. that whole desire of being a mother. Um, so I really started my my work as a graphic facilitator, graphic recorder, while also having children. So I also kind of have that, um, you know, I didn't ne necessarily have the luxury of starting a whole business and then having children. Um, so I kind of just, it's all I've, I've ever known to is just sort of juggling this entrepreneurial life with this really interesting creative business while also being a, a parent to three small kids. So that's, that's the quick and dirty of it. That's, that's the, yeah. the high level story of my life. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um, you talk about drawing or creative facilitation and what, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So, uh, kind of happens in a few different ways, but it's the same skill set that I use. So if you think about facilitation, when you're facilitating, you uh, hear what people are saying and you feed back to them in words what it is that you're hearing and help make people or help help the people in the room kind of connect their own dots, right? And and let's say you're talking about a vision or a strategy, like you're moving towards something and how all the voices in the room are contributing to what that is going to be. So if you think about it from that perspective, just add drawings on top of it. So instead of uh, hearing what someone has to say and feeding it back in words and feeding it back in pictures. So creating a visual representation of what was just said in the room or a presentation at a conference and so on. And since most people think in pictures and of course the cliche, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, it resonates with most people in the room. Even if they can't articulate why they it does resonate with them, they just know that it does. Um, so yeah, it's something like special to be able to see your own words in graphic format, right? So, um, so sometimes I, I do like a lot of conferences where I get asked to kind of do all the presentations that happen during that day. And then I'm also asked to kind of be in more facilitation type settings where there's a strategic plan that they're trying to develop. And I create a visual representation of what they've just said in trying to come up with that plan. So yeah, yeah. basically wherever there's like really complex content, yeah. we need to simplify it. I'm. It's just really for me, it's just about simplifying 
It's like, how do we get this information across? And we live in such a, a space now where it's instant, instant gratification, right? We want to know the information now. And I love that the graphics can, you know, you take a look at it for 10, 15 seconds and you can get the big idea that that person was trying to get across or what that, what was said in that meeting. Right. So I love that aspect of it too. Yeah. Now, is there any, like, uh, like I find it very interesting that, you know, you can draw and you can doodle and that can sort of lead to like new insights or new ideas. Um, but when you're drawing for, for example, like a presentation or a meeting, are there any particular, techniques or strategies or is it pretty much free form and you sort of uh, create the associations tell us more about that yeah i the way that i like to work is very sort of free flowing i don't like to know a whole lot going into it but there is an element of risk involved with that because you don't know how polished that speaker might be or if that uh that meeting that you're going into if they have a safe culture right so there is like an element of risk every time um, but I like the fact that you mentioned doodling because uh, I think a lot of us experience this and have a similar story of getting in trouble for doodling in our notes as we were growing up, right? And now there's research, not as much as I would like, but there's some research and statistics out there now around how um, drawing can help actually help you retain. So just the sheer fact of doodling can help you retain up to 29% more information, right? So that's like a pretty powerful statistic in terms of just rem helping you remember, even if your doodles have nothing to do with the content, right? So that's where I like to sort of kind of get involved is helping make that, helping make the doodle a little bit more purposeful. The way that I sort of see it, trying to remember what your question was now, is <laughs> around, uh, it's like an interpretation. So if you speak, if you think of any other language, like I, I think I would be a sign language interpreter if I didn't do this work because I started down that route at one point. I took all the prerequisites to get into into the program. And if you think about sign language, someone at the front of the room, they're hearing it and they're putting it into the hand gestures right in real time. Whereas I'm doing the same interpretation just from a drawing perspective. So that real timeness. And I like it when people can see the drawing happen and then they're hearing it and then they're seeing it. It's like reaffirming for them what they've just heard. So yeah. And I really, I think just doodling and, and, and going and taking your own notes and adding doodles and graphics into your own notes can be a pre pretty powerful tool. Like obviously I'm doing it on like a super professional level, but I love it when people share with me the drawings that they've done in their little notebooks. Um, of course they're like, oh, they're so bad. I'm like, no, like it's almost like the worse they are, the better. And sometimes, sometimes when you're taking your own notes for yourself. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And that's where I was, you know, when you introduced me about, you know, drawing is a powerful thinking tool where I think a lot of people see drawing as, you know, something you go to a museum and you look at a beautiful drawing and you're like, wow, that's nice. But, uh, I think drawing can be a really powerful tool to help yourself think. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And do you find that uh, this helps more for audio learners, visual learners, or anyone? Or tell us more about that. Yeah, there's a lot of debate about this whole learning styles thing. It's such a funny thing because we, you know, people still, I think, refer to themselves as like, oh, I'm a visual learner, oh, I'm an audio learner, blah, blah, blah. But apparently that's been debunked. So, like, who knows? But I think people know, even if it's been debunked, that you have like a learning style. Uh, people do have a preference whether or not they like to take in information in an audio way like this podcast or if they want to watch a YouTube video, right? So, you know, anybody who likes to be able to be like, especially if you're going to take their own notes and add some drawings in, that's sort of like kinesthetic, like hands-on learning style, um, as well as anybody who, you know, would prefer to watch a YouTube video would probably resonate with this type of thing. Yeah, it's... um. And uh, so tell us more about uh, what you've learned drawing 2,000 presentations. Yeah, I, I, it's probably close to 3,000 at this point because that's my number from last year. I haven't updated it. I need to do my I always do my numbers at the end of the year. But uh, I have learned a lot. I, I can usually tell, especially with presentations in the first few minutes, if it's going to be difficult if it's going to be a tricky one, just people, how they set it up, how fast they talk, sort of their energy behind it. 
it's, uh, yeah, I feel like I could start a whole other business on how to do better, like PowerPoint present at this point. But, uh, yeah, I've, I, the thing that I get to, I, I get to learn about a lot of different industries because I don't work in just one industry, even though I do have a lot of in the tech space, uh, I get to learn so much. Like I was learning about, um, fishing rights, the indigenous fishing rights last week, like just really fascinating, interesting topics that you'd never really get to like really be in on the conversation. And so of course, from like a content perspective, I've learned so much from so many different industries, uh, but I've also learned so many things about like the, the do's and don'ts, I think a little bit of some presentation. Uh, one thing I, I'll just say one thing that I learned um, going from I was all in person before March of 2020. All all of it was paper and markers. And then March of 2020, of course, couldn't travel anymore. So I had to figure out how to do everything on the computer. And I learned very quickly how different presenting on a screen versus in a room is totally, totally different. And the, the biggest thing was how quick people talk. They talk way faster than they would if they were in person. So I had to really <laughs> work extra hard to keep up with people. Uh, even though they had 30 minutes, they finished in 20 because they spoke so fast, <laughs> right? So I always just tell people like, please slow down. Mm -hmm. I also really got into sort of like some accessibility things of like things that people can do to make their uh, presentation a little bit more accessible for folks too. Um, like one, one easy thing to do is just to uh, describe what you look like before you start your presentation, you know, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ashton. I'm a white female with uh, asymmetrical hair that has a little purple in it. And I'm sitting in a room that has a purple wall with some drawings behind me, right? Just to kind of like help people who may have low vision um, or are blind, just that sort of like to be in on what's going on because they they can't be, you know, see it, what's happening. So, you know, just things like that, that I've learned as well. So I'm sure I could talk for a whole hour just about those things, but <laughs> there's just a couple, there's just a couple there. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, how do you actually draw conference presentations? What is your style? What is your method? So if you think about it, uh, I have this sort of formula where I'm, you're listening. So you're taking in information. You're trying to make sense of it. You're trying to connect the dots. And then you have your output, the capturing part. So it's this weird balance between all three at any given time. So even as you're drawing, you're still listening and trying to make sense of what's happening. And when you're capturing something five minutes down, you know, into the presentation, it might loop back to something else they just said. So trying to sort of make those connections while you're also in this like real time balancing act of all three. So it, it's hard to explain, of course. But uh, yeah, I think just going back to how, what I said earlier about this like interpretation, if you think of anybody who, you know, knows multiple languages, they're in this like interpretation mode as well. But I have to sort of throw in that like making sense and the connections piece at the same time to try to make all of those ideas um, make sense. When someone starts their presentation going, I'm going to show you the three ways to la la la, like that's a little easier for me. <laughs> yeah. But when you don't necessarily know a whole lot, especially in those industries, when I walk into these industries and I haven't really know, I don't know a whole lot other than like maybe watching a few YouTube videos and reading a few articles before I get started to kind of help me a little bit. Um, it's all very in the moment. Yeah. yeah. What do you say to people when they can't, they say they can't draw or that's not them, you know, all, you know, it's kind of these rationals. Yeah, it's a great, that's a great one. I get that all of the time. And of course, I just want to shake them. I'm like, yes, you can. Like stick people are okay. Like it's mm -hmm. okay to draw a stick person. And, you know, going back to the, like, if you want to draw to help yourself think it like doesn't have to look nice, like in, in a way it shouldn't look nice. Right. So, you know, I just say like stick people are okay. You know, you can upgrade to a star person if you want. <laughs> you take a star and instead of the top of the star, it's a circle for a head and the little arms and legs. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, my my work looks nice because I've been doing it almost every day for nine and a half years or nine years. 
So it's, uh, you know, I always just tell people, if you spent just as much time as I did your work, it, we would probably even look better than mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I don't think you even have to even consider yourself a real creative person in order to get the benefits. And that's what it is all goes back to is the benefits of, of just making some marks to help yourself think. Sunny Brown, who wrote a book called The Doodle Revolution, and I, and she has a, a quote of or her definition of a doodle, and uh, it's to, to make meaningless marks to help yourself think, and that's what it should be about, less about like, um, less about trying to create a piece of art. And I know we're coming close to the end of our conversation, which has been really interesting is, um, you know, how can people get started with sketch noting or visual note taking? And then what are some of the benefits you would let them or you tell them by visually capturing information and or doodling? Yeah, I think I, I have a little freebie book. There's a sketch note 101, which we can share with your with your people that just sort of gives a like a high level overview. I'm in the process of writing a book, actually, I'm hoping it will be out in early 2023. So you can keep an eye out on that. It's a beginner's guide. So it starts some, as something as like simple as drawing a straight line, like real basic. Um, so I would just encourage people to, if this is something that they're interested, there's lots of resources out there and they could certainly reach out to me if they want some help getting started. And yeah, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, take the doodles that you're already doing and see if you can draw like a little, you know, box or a little circle or a little something to help connect ideas. Um, one of the easiest things that I tell people um, to get started with, like at its like very core, like first thing is t uh, do not capture on lined paper. Try to get uh, just a blank white piece of paper and turn it on its side. So like landscape style, and that will just totally change your the way that you capture without even really trying because if you stay on the lined paper your brain's just going to want to go back to that sort of linear linear capturing mm. and if you take a white piece of paper turn on its side you're just totally like changing the whole dynamic mm -hmm. and then that way you start kind of capturing all over the page and you can make lines to connect ideas right so that's just like a nice introduction way you know you don't have to have anything fancy you don't need a fancy sketchbook you just need a pencil and a white piece of paper. You know, you could get like if you're like me and you like all your fancy tools and markers and all this stuff, you can get those later. But just to get started, all you need is a blank piece of paper and a pencil. Mm -hmm. This was a really fascinating discussion. I really, you know, uh, got a lot of insights and takeaways and, you know, kind of how to use your creativity, imagination. How do people in the audience that are listening, um, follow you, visit your website, you know, see your work, et cetera. Yeah. So uh, my business is Minds Eye Creative and uh, my website is mindseyecreative.ca. And uh, you can find my socials there on my website. I would say right now my most active one that I'm on is Twitter, which is Minds Eye CCF. And yeah, that's probably the best way to sort of get in touch with me. And I do have a YouTube channel and I have some drawing tutorials and I talk a little bit more in depth about uh, graphic facilitation, graphic recording and sketch noting and all that good stuff and the kind of different tools, tech tools and physical analog tools that I use. So if you want to geek out about markers and all of that kind of stuff and and watch some, some tutorials on how to draw some different elements, uh, you can go check that out too. And for all the audience out there listening, um, Ashton's resources will be in the links and show notes. Uh, thanks so much for a great discussion. Um, and we look forward to hearing about your future success. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it.